What's going on everybody? This is Pro Digital Gear and today we are going to be setting up the brand new Epson F570. Also, we are going to show you one very important thing not to do. If you want to skip right towards that, go to this time here. But we recommend that you watch the full video, especially if you're setting up your printer for the first time. Let's start off by showing you what you get with your printer. First, you get an extra maintenance box. When we open it up, it looks like this. They also give you a Ziploc bag for your old maintenance tank. You can see the chip here. You wanna be very careful of that. We have our power plug and our startup menus and warranty information. Also, Epson provides you with three rolls of DS transfer paper. One is 24 inch and the other two are 17 inch. This attaches to the front of the printer to catch your prints as they come out. You get two sets of ink, black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. We're gonna show you how to install those. As you can see, this is totally different than the average ink cartridge. We'll show you how to charge up your printer in just a little bit. And then of course you have the F570 itself. There was a lot of blue protective tape around the printer. We're gonna show you where all that is so that you can remove it. There's some spots that you can't see right away. So first, let's get rid of the plastic cover. Then we can move over to this side of the printer. Remove this tape and plastic here. Then we're gonna remove the tape that's holding down the top cover. And when we get to this side of the printer, we are gonna to wanna to be careful with this string because it's attached to a lock that's on the print head track below. So when we open the cover, you can see it's attached to this little orange key. Ever so slightly turn it counterclockwise. You'll feel it click out and then pull up. Now you're definitely gonna to wanna to save this key in case you decide to ship or move your printer to a new location. Next, we're gonna to wanna to carefully remove the blue tape that's over the print head. Close our cover and then open this door here on the left side of the printer. There's some foam protection around the cutting blade with some tape on it. So we wanna make sure that we remove that and then go ahead and close the door. Now let's peel the clear plastic off the top of the printer towards the back. Remove these two pieces of blue tape on the side and on the top. Then we can open the back lid. That's where our media goes. So first let's pull off the blue tape that's on our sheet feed tray. Now if we open the door all the way to the back, we have access to our printer spindle. We are gonna wanna remove all the foam that's held on by plastic tape on our spindle. It's on each end of the spindle and in the middle. Also, there is a blue piece of tape on the maintenance door in the back. Go ahead and remove that. Also, if you wanna pull out the maintenance tank, you can see how to remove it or put it back in. Let's move on to powering up the printer for the first time and charging the ink. When you charge your printer for the first time, you'll probably use a majority of the ink from the first set. But you'll still have some left over in the bottle. Either way, you get two sets, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's first cut off the wrapping off our inks. And let's get them all ready to go. Next, we can open up the ink door. The black ink goes in the first bay here and we're actually gonna pour the ink from the bottles into the printer. Make sure you agitate the bottle, unscrew the top, 
And it's okay to flip the bottle over and put the black ink in this first bay. It's really easy to line up just like this and then insert the bottle. Now the black ink is actually gonna flow out of the bottle and into the printer. You'll see the reservoir fill up and then you could take off the ink bottle, screw the cap back on and you'll notice that there's still a little left over in that bottle, so don't throw it away. Next, let's do the same for the magenta. Gently agitate, unscrew the top, flip the bottle over, and pour the ink into the reservoir in the printer. You can see the ink fill up the reservoir, and when it's done, pull the ink off, screw back on the bottle top, and then store that for later. Same thing for the yellow, which goes in the next bay. Don't forget to gently agitate, unscrew the bottle cap, and flip it over into this reservoir here. And again, we could see the ink fill up the reservoir in the printer. Go ahead and remove the yellow bottle and screw on the cap. And last but not least, gently agitate the cyan, unscrew the bottle cap, and insert it into the final bay. What's really cool about this printer is you no longer rely on digital software to tell you how much ink is in your printer you can actually see it. The flip side of that is there's no more ink levels on the digital display. Don't forget to screw the cap back on the cyan. So let's revisit this rubber strip. This rubber strip is used to seal off these tiny little tubes here, which release excess air from the system. When the printer needs to access the ink, or when you fill up your printer with ink, these need to be left unsealed. When you're getting your printer ready for transportation, then and only then would you take this rubber strip, flip it over, line up the holes, and then seal off these tiny tubes. We made the huge mistake of leaving these unsealed while we filled up the ink reservoirs and then we sealed them when we charged our printer for the first time and tried to make a print. This actually stopped the printer from being able to use the ink and the lines going to the print head were not fully charged. This is very important. We definitely don't want you to make the same mistake we did. So do not seal off these tiny tubes when charging your printer or when printing or when filling the printer with the ink. There's actually a diagram on the top of the printer that shows this and we completely missed this. So we don't want that to happen to you. Again, the only time that you would use this rubber strip is for transportation. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our printer then hit the power button to power up the printer for the first time. It's gonna ask us to choose our language and we can use the touch screen to do so. Next, it will remind us to remove all of the protective plastic tape and guards from the printer. Next, we could choose our date format and then enter in the date. Then we can choose the time format. And then we can enter in the time. This little reminder here is very important. As you can see, it reminds us not to squeeze the ink bottles when we're filling up our printer with ink. It also reminds us to match the color to the right ink reservoirs. And then it also reminds us that filling up the printer over the two thirds mark repeatedly could harm the printer. Go ahead and hit proceed. And here it's letting us know for this time that we can fill the ink tank up to the upper line. This is really important because we are going to be charging the ink lines. So the ink levels are really important here. Then we can go ahead and hit the start button. It could take a decent amount of time to charge the ink lines going to the print head. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is load in some media. To load media, touch the paper settings button, go to the top option, load roll media. A little diagram will pop up showing you how to open the top cover, 
make sure you open up the second part of the cover on the top. And then we can unwrap one of our rolls of media. You might want to choose to leave the brown paper around the roll of media. It might make it easier to load. We took it off before we put the spindle on, which was a little more difficult. Go ahead and gently pull up on the printer spindle. It should lift right out of the printer. Then remove the clear side of the printer spindle. Insert the printer spindle into the roll of media. Go ahead and slide the clear part over to the roll of media. Now we can drop the spindle with the media back into the printer and gently roll some of the media into the printer. The printer will actually beep, confirming that the media has been rolled into the printer far enough. It'll then tell us to close the top covers. Then we can pick our paper type. And in this situation, we're using DS transfer paper and there's two types. This one is the multi-use for both textile and rigid applications. Maybe all you sublimation fans out there have better expertise on this. We just picked textile for now. We're gonna be printing on mouse pads. So I have no idea if this is the correct setting. So now let's perform a nozzle check by going to our settings menu, going to the maintenance option, and then clicking on print head nozzle check. You can pick your paper source for the nozzle check and then pick roll media. And then when you've done that, you can go ahead and press start. The printer will print out a nozzle pattern to show you if your nozzles are clogged or not clogged. Now, our nozzle check was 100% blank because we used that little rubber strip to seal off those tiny little tubes while we were charging the ink and printing the nozzle check. Now, in the startup guide, it doesn't mention this anywhere. However, right on the top of the printer, of course, on a tiny little diagram, it shows you what that rubber strip is actually for. As you can see, when you're using the printer, you should leave the rubber strip like this. When moving the printer, that's when you would take the rubber strip off, flip it over, and seal off those tiny little tubes. So again, when filling the printer up with ink, when charging the lines, or when printing, leave the square side of this rubber strip down and over to the left a little bit, leaving those tiny little tubes unsealed. So in order for us to fix this, just in case you did the same thing, we had to run the powerful cleaning cycle, I would say at least two times, in order to get the ink through the lines to the print head. And even after that, we had to do some normal cleaning cycles. The power cleaning cycle can be found in the settings, maintenance, and if you scroll down, you could find powerful cleaning. Now, after we did that, we ran a nozzle check. And we got all our nozzles to print. Then you would click the nozzle check is okay, and your printer is ready to go. We made a simple test print through Photoshop and it was quite amazing. Although the print did come out looking like it did not have a lot of color in it, once we ran it under the heat press at the proper temperature and time, the true Pro Digital Gear colors popped right out. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions about the Epson F570, or if you are looking to purchase one, feel free to give the knowledgeable staff at Pro Digital Gear a call, 1-888-459-1482. Visit our website at prodigitalgear.com or send us an email at sales at prodigitalgear.com. All right, thank you so much for watching. Happy printing.